Hello everyone, I'm Lazy Ant. In the last video, we talked about the story of Shun, the last of the five emperors in Chinese mythology. This episode is about Shun's successor, the story of Yu. Before we delve into Yu's story, we need to start with the tale of his father, Gun. Legend has it that the fourth of the five emperors, Emperor Yao, although diligent in governing the country and kind to the people, experienced numerous adversities during his 70-year reign. One disaster was a severe drought caused by the simultaneous appearance of ten sons. The drought was resolved after Yi, the official archer at the time, shot down nine of the sons. Soon after, a flood ensued. The great flood was triggered by Gong Gong, the water god. After being defeated by Yao's father, Shuangshu, Gong Gong knocked over Mount Bujo, causing a cataclysm and rampant floods. By the time of Emperor Yao, the floodwaters had not yet receded. Emperor Yao convened his ministers to discuss who should be appointed to manage the flood, and they all recommended Gun. Yao felt that Gun was too arrogant and might not be able to complete the task, but at that time, there was simply no more suitable candidate, so he reluctantly let Gun try. Upon receiving Yao's order, Gun invited a sorcerer to predict his fate. The sorcerer said, This matter is very ominous. There's a beginning, but no end. Despite the unfavorable prediction, Gun eventually accepted the order and set off to manage the water. Faced with the surging flood, Gun kept raising the levees to prevent the flood from overflowing. However, the flood was too massive, and after nine years of efforts, he eventually failed. Just as Goon was at his wit's end, the owl and the turtle suggested an idea. They said, there's a special kind of soil in heaven that can grow automatically. If you take a small piece and throw it into the water, the soil will grow bigger and even form a high mountain. Using this soil to block the flood will surely succeed. Goon was delighted to hear this idea, so he quietly went to the heavenly court and stole the soil. Goon cast this special soil into the surging floodwaters, and wherever the soil landed, a levee instantly grew larger and higher, pushing all the floodwaters back into the river, allowing the displaced people to return to their homes. The heavenly emperor, upon discovering that the soil was stolen, was very angry. He sent the fire god, Zerong, to the human world to arrest Goon and executed him on Feather Mountain. After the heavenly emperor took back the soil, the floodwaters roared back and flooded once again. This flood lasted until the era of Yao's successor, Shun. The sorcerer's prediction was fully realized. After Gun was executed, his body did not decompose. Fearing Guan's resurrection, the heavenly emperor sent someone to cut open Guan's belly. At this moment, a dragon flew out of Guan's belly and ascended into the clouds. This dragon was Guan's son, Yu. Guan's body eventually turned into a three-legged turtle and sank into the abyss beneath Feather Mountain. Since Guan's nine-year water management effort had not resolved the issue, he was exiled by Emperor Yao to Feather Mountain, where he eventually died. Guan's son, Yu, took over the task of managing the water in the face of this crisis. When he accepted the water management task, he had just married Nu Zhao of the Tushan clan. Seeing the plight of the people suffering from the flood and considering the heavy responsibility he carried, he resolutely bid his wife farewell and went to the site of the water management work. Yu immediately summoned Guan's previous assistants and the people to assist. They together trekked through mountains and rivers, roughly surveying the source, upstream and downstream of the water flow, and marking important places with a pile of stones or cut trees. After completing the survey, he learned from his father's failure in managing the water, and finally decided to employ a method of dredging to control the flooding. During the water control period, Yu crossed mountains and rivers, traversed streams and rivers, held measuring tools, measured the terrain from west to east continuously, set up markers, and planned waterways. He traveled all over, cutting through mountains when encountering them, and building levees in low-lying areas to dredge waterways, guiding the flood into the sea. He put in great effort and did not dare to rest in his endeavors to control the water. 
During the flood control period, Yu passed by his own home three times. The first time he passed by, his wife had just given birth to their son a few days ago. As the baby's cry emanated from the house, he did not go in, fearing it would delay the flood control work. The second time he passed by, the son in his wife's arms could already call him father. But as the project was in its critical stage, he still did not enter. The third time he passed by, his son was already over ten years old, and tried hard to pull him into the house. Yu gently stroked his son's head, saying that the flood control work was still very busy, and hurriedly left without entering the house. The story of Yu passing his home three times without entering has been passed down as a tale of virtue and is still praised by people today. Yu personally led the people to work tirelessly, eating and sleeping in the open. Due to his hard work, his hands were full of calluses, the hair on his lower legs was rubbed off, and being soaked in muddy water for a long time caused his toenails to fall off. After 13 years of relentless efforts, he finally managed to divert the standing water on the plains into the rivers and then into the ocean, eliminating the flood in the central plains. Yu was meritorious in managing the water troubles of the Yellow River and was passed the throne by Emperor Shun, choosing Sha as the name of his dynasty, officially establishing the Sha dynasty. To express their gratitude to Yu, people honored him as Da Yu, meaning Great Yu. Later generations also referred to him as Sha Yu because he established the Sha dynasty around 2070 BC to 1600 BC. From then on, the history of China entered a class society, which was related to the institution of slavery implemented after Yu's son Shi took the throne. From the Epic of Gilgamesh to Noah's Ark, the Great Flood is described in the ancient legends of many cultures around the world. The story of Gun and Yu controlling the flood is the Chinese version of the flood myth. The entire process of water control changed the civilization pattern of the middle and lower reaches of the Yellow River, providing opportunities and conditions for China to enter into a national civilization. Around the transition of the 22nd and 21st centuries BC, the climate suddenly warmed and the nomadic civilization gradually shifted to settled agricultural life. The rise in temperature accelerated the melting of glaciers, causing floods in many river settlements in the middle and lower reaches of the northern hemisphere. According to geological research, the Yellow River underwent a major change in course between 2200 BC and 1900 BC. This flood affected many unrelated clans and tribes in the middle and lower reaches of the river and managing the flood required a central power that all the tribes obeyed, so Goon and Yu were recommended. According to rigorous historical records, after Yu successfully controlled the flood, he did not give up the power granted during the extraordinary period, but instead concentrated power to establish a dynasty. The veracity of the prehistoric flood indirectly confirms the history on the eve of the Shah dynasty, while also revealing some suspicious points in the records of Gun and Yu's flood control. The literature summarizes that Gun's failure in flood control was due to his attempts at containment, whereas Yu's success was due to his efforts in drainage. However, flood prevention has been a consistent method of flood control and would not have led to Gun's execution. Moreover, such a once-in-a-millennium flood is difficult to control, even in today's more technologically advanced era. It is hard to believe that Yu, in ancient times, was able to control the flood merely by diverting the river flow. Modern scientists speculate that when Yu was controlling the flood, the climate suddenly improved, monsoon rainfall normalized, vegetation recovered major rivers completed their course changes, and floods naturally reduced with the improvement of the climate. This may be closer to the fact. On August 4, 2016, a Sino-US research team announced in the American journal Science that they had found scientific evidence of an ancient super-flood in the Yellow River Basin. This flood is likely the catastrophic flood mentioned in the story of Yu's control of the waters. 
Despite various speculations, Yu's efforts to control the flood are stories that have been praised by many people throughout history, and his fame even surpasses that of the legendary five emperors. Yu's spirit of relentless effort is worth learning from in some respects. In the next episode of our story, we will talk about the revival of Shao Kong. Before Yu, as mentioned in previous episodes, the throne was passed down through a system of abdication. However, after Yu, the system changed to hereditary succession, which gave rise to the first Chinese dynasty, the Xia dynasty. Precisely because it was the first dynasty to adopt hereditary succession, the Xia dynasty's initial rule was quite unstable. As a result, Yu's descendants once lost their power. Later, the sixth emperor, Shao Kong, after many difficulties, finally managed to reclaim the power of the Xia dynasty. Follow my channel to learn more about the history and stories of Chinese culture. You'll never have to worry about running out of topics and stories during your next gathering with friends. If you like this video, please give me a like and subscribe this YouTube channel. Every subscription is the biggest support. Thank you.